Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I'm playing in the tier 10 German classic sniping tank. This is the Gorilla 15. This vehicle is the most accurate tank inside the game and before some of you are already preparing your messages in the chat saying well actually Quickie Baby this threat spawn one of three be on the UDES inside the siege mode actually have better accuracy than the Gorilla I think you'll find. I would argue that well yes you are right I don't think that most people are going to set up the Sturitzfang 103B and the UDES for more accuracy. On those tanks, or specifically the STRV 103B, uh, you want to take the field mod that lowers the vehicle's accuracy by 5% to be able to improve the vehicle's rate of fire by 3% because that vehicle is all about rapid rate of fire. It's got one of the highest damage per minute inside the game. I think it's like the third highest damage per minute in the game after the Badger and the Tortoise. So that is what the STRV is for. Also, you want to pump up the rate of fire on a tank like that so that you can be able to lock down the tracks of your opponents and keep them locked down while you're cresting over the ridge line and hopefully feasting upon all of their lovely hit points. The Gorilla, on the other hand, isn't about damage per minute. It's not really about the rate of fire of the vehicle. And what I like to do with the Gorilla is actually lower my vehicle's damage per minute by 3% to increase my accuracy by an additional 5%. And so that means that even without using an aiming device on this vehicle, it gets to a ridiculous accuracy. I think it's something like 0.22 with this build. Accordingly, even when you're aiming at things that are hundreds of meters away, you can aim for weak points. Although, on the other hand, with some of the worst soft stats in the game for when you're moving and turning the turret with 0.4 turret traverse and 0.3 moving traverse when you're turning the tank at 0.26 when you're going forwards and backwards this vehicle's reticle blooms out for an age luckily you can tame this with the vehicle's good aim time of 1.5 seconds so it is quick to be able to get that reticle that blooms back out to its optimal pinpoint precision this vehicle used to be way better back in the day i believe it had eight degrees of gun depression instead of seven and i think it had way better dispersion values and even a better rate of fire Wargaming realized this tank was pretty toxic for the game and it was kind of ironic because it was actually a replacement for an already toxic tank, the WTE-100, which you may have seen out on the battlefield over the last couple of weeks for the last Waffenträger game mode. So considering this was a replacement and it was toxic so they decided to nerf it a little bit, really shows you uh, that I guess Wargaming, at least they reacted to a, a, a vehicle that was causing issues inside the matchmaker. but. Probably a little bit ill-conceived that they replaced one one toxic vehicle with another one, right? Although this is, it's natural within the tech tree. It makes a lot more sense that you get the Gorilla after the WTR Panzer IV rather than getting yourself the uh, WTE 100 like it was previously. And so this vehicle, I like to set it up with a gun rammer to be able to improve the rate of fire a little bit. Uh, the exhaust to be able to improve the camera rating of this vehicle, which is actually pretty horrible camera rating on this tank with a 4.73 moving camo which is really bad and a turbo as well because i want to have a lot of mobility make the vehicles awesome top speed and reverse speed even a little bit better because after all this thing has no armor it's literally the bare bones minimum of making a mobile gun so i'm using intuition here to switch between the vehicles rather mediocre ammo selection it has fairly good armor piercing rounds with decent shell velocity. Oh my god, I can't believe the most accurate tank in the game actually missed that. Um, with 279 millimeters of PEM. But everyone who's played tier 10 tank destroyers will know that 279 is not that impressive, but the 1,200 meters a second shell velocity is pretty good. The gold rounds, however, on this vehicle only have 334 millimeters of penetration, which is one of the worst at tier 10 tank destroyer. I think the only vehicle that's worse is probably going to be the Minotauro, I believe, which gets 330 or is it 340? Sound off in the comments down below. All I know is that it's it's not good penetration on either of those two tanks on the gold rounds. And so this isn't the vehicle like you're playing a T124 or a T123 or a 268 where you just load gold, you've got like 375 to 395 millimeters of pen, depending on which vehicle you're playing in that comparison, and you just absolutely dominate. But sometimes it's HE that's the job here, and oh, ho, 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 that was taking the game at a chance there. As I decided that considering we were down by five tanks and down by 
like 4,000 hit points that I had to get forwards to go after the FU4005. And wow, my HE rounds easily able to go through his turret, just like his HE rounds would have been able to go through mine. Mine hitting for 950 while theirs doing 1,750. I would have had to get the mother of all low rolls to not finish off that tank. And oh, ho, ho, that's an overmatch of a belly. And it's looking like I might one shot another tier 8 tank destroyer. Oh, that is awkward. I think that was the final tick of the fire. That was such a sad kill. But look at the hit points. We are down by 6,000 hit points and 5 kills in this game. How are we going to come back? Luckily, the G-Saw finishes off the WZ-120. So now we're only outnumbered in a 2 versus 6 scenario. I'm going to come around the corner with a heat round here loaded for the Tortoise. The Tortoise doesn't look like they expected me as they had worse reactions than my aim time. And I aim for that. Flat plate on the right, which is a weak point. You know what? If you do have heat, it's far easier to hit that big flat area on the right of the tortoise when you're facing it than it is to try and actually aim for the weak point on top, as we saw earlier on. So I was thinking, shall I go for the GW100? And I realized, well, if I go for the GW100, there could be a char there. And if I go for the GW100, then my G-Saw friend, who is valiantly holding off three advancing tanks down towards the south, might be in an awkward scenario. So I tell... Bla Vlad Palovnik. Vlad Palovnik, that I'm going to help them. But also, I'm hoping that my team is going to tell me exactly what the Leo and the Shkoda's HP is, because remember, they were outside my render distance, so I didn't know how many hit points they were on. So I kind of awkwardly mess up this position. Uh, I didn't expect the Shkoda to be coming around the corner so quickly, and so I didn't get into a good position to be able to finish off the Shkoda. That's a little bit of a nightmare. Now, I'm going to ask Vlad on my team, go corner, please, because I was so sure that the Leopard or the Char was going to flank us. And I'm going to take my time to try and overmatch the belly of the T95. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out, and I get spotted. Big disaster, which is going to allow the enemies to not only know where I am, but probably advance towards us. But luckily, the G-Saw, thank you to you, Vlad. I gave him a big thanks for going that way. Finishes off the Leopard to stop him from flanking and maybe getting HE rounds into our back. Unfortunately, I'm not really doing my job, and I allow the T95 to slip through. So... Well, um, I'm kind of micromanaging Vlad here, in a way, at the back of the map. I've really let him down by allowing this T95 through. And I realize, what am I going to do against a T95 that I have to shoot twice with the possibility of having an autoloader? So I decide I'm going to go and help out Vlad here in their G-Saw instead. So we're still outnumbered, but we've changed our 2 versus 6 now into a 2 versus 4, and Vlad is going to find the artillery. Wonderful stuff. Is he going to finish off that artillery, or is the artillery hiding behind the building? I'm looking to see if I can feather off the shot. Vlad, unfortunately, takes 176 damage. Um, I'm actually trying to say thank you to him there, but I actually end up pinging him for some reason instead. Uh, and I'm asking him, like, let's go for the char. Let's see if we can finish off this char, who was last spotted on a quarter hit points. And the char is looking the wrong way. Not sure whether the char was AFK or not. Either way, I wasn't complaining to be able to reduce our one, our two versus six into a now a two versus two. And we are pretty much dead even on hit points. You can see I'm like super excited. I'm saying like, let's go cap. Let's go two times cap. And it looks like my friend Vlad here is going to come along with us. And I decide, well, if we're two versus six, we might as well try and also contest the Brothers in Arms medal here, suggesting to Vlad that if we both manage to stay alive with the kill tally that we have, that we are going to get that Brothers in Arms medal. Okay, cool. So Skoda is a one shot. T95 is going to take two shots. In this kind of a situation, the T95 could be anywhere. And I just realized that, oh my word, the only reason why we we're in this situation is because the enemy team was so greedy. They must have been saying in chat, no cap, kill all, thinking that when they had that two versus six scenario that they were going to come and farm me and Vlad. Well, now me and Vlad have made it even Stevens here. So in these kind of situations, it's not enough to just sit in the cap circle. You've got to try and put yourself in the mindset of where the enemies are going to come from. And so you'll see that I'm saying to Vlad, T95 will come north, we kill Skoda. And so I'm aiming down this alleyway, and you'll see that I'm pinging the F0 area, hoping that Vlad is going to aim up at the Skoda. Because I thought, well, if I have this angle, I'll proxy spot him if he comes down there. I can turn around and finish him off. If he comes through here, then Vlad will be able to see him. But I'm hoping that Vlad is going to be watching the corner in his brand new G-Saw. 
1006 Scheme 7. So they must be a good player if they've already managed to make it at tier 9. This game was from a, a couple of weeks ago. So for anyone to have got to tier 9 for the wheeled vehicles, well firstly they have a lot of patience, let me tell you, or a lot of free experience. But also it suggests that they are an experienced player trying to get in on the new action. So right now you could cut the tension with a knife it is so thick in the air i don't like these scenarios where your opponents know exactly where you are and you just have to keep calm and try and aim to see if you're going to hit them they now have 35 seconds left and i'm really hoping at this stage there will be an immense irony that the enemies chose not to cap but now me and vlad are forcing the enemies to come and fight us we hear the bells tolling will it be the end of us the t95 approaches from an angle vlad falls back and I'm thinking, well, if we just cap for 15 seconds, we should be fine. But no, no point in capping now. Vlad gets interrupted. I don't think we can sit there for a minute with a T95 coming down upon us. So I'm going to leave the cap circle to try and flank the Skoda. The Skoda's fired twice, maybe has a 20 second reload. And I'm hoping that Vlad is just going to kite this T95. I come around the corner. I look for a shot. I have to fire early because he's aiming at me and I can't afford to lose those hit points. But now the T95 actually aims at Vlad. So I'm going to advance towards the T95 to close the distance. And I'm thinking about going after the Skoda. Now they're on 12 hit points right now so at the time i was thinking about managing to get the ram in but i guess the skoda's just thinking oh my lord there's a crazy griller coming for me i ought to try and get back and this is where the turbo really comes in handy and allows me to finish off the skoda before they're even able to reload the second magazine to go after me so now i'm coming around this corner to try and just let the t95 know that i'm in front i asked vlad to fall back to not get caught because i want to try and secure that brothers in arms medal for us if he dies then it doesn't count as a brothers in arms and i'm just hoping that there's no low rolls here as we get behind the t95 and pull off a big flanking play and i say gg mate and vlad says gg back and even the forest spirit on our team who's been watching the whole thing says gg that's about as feels good as it gets in world of tanks playing i don't think a vehicle that anyone could ever really call overpowered to make an unexpected friend and take down a two versus six so mission complete enemy defeated two heroes alive at the end of the battle and yeah the the, the irony is complete well, I guess the enemies were quite greedy with their no cap kill all statement. And luckily, when you have a teammate like Vlad on your team, who's just just the perfect person to play World of Tanks with there, willing to work together and not just go along with the plan that we were quickly trying to formulate, but perform it perfectly. Oh, that's the kind of teammate that dreams are made of. And one of the best things about the Griller is it's so darn mediocre. Even if you only get 1,056 base experience, you still get an ace tanker. This was the Brothers in Arms medal for both of us picking up three frags and surviving by the end of the battle and a top gun for those six kills. And I, I just about broke even on credits as I did need some gold to go through that tortoise. So the Grilla, is it the vehicle that I would recommend everyone jump to be able to play in World of Tanks? Well, no. It's got the third worst win ratio only after the Fosh 155, which is a, a reward vehicle, and the FV4005, which is, let's be honest, a bit of a troll. But there is something magical about the Grilla with that 0.22 base accuracy, but more importantly, 0.22 base accuracy without ruining all of the other aspects of the tank. And so if you want to try it out and see how I set this thing up, I'll put a link to it in the Tanks GG website down below in the description. The only thing I would recommend is watch out for how this vehicle behaves on soft because for some reason Wargaming gave it the worst soft ground resistances in the game. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments down below how many times you have seen a team overconfident declaring no cap, kill all, and then ending up immensely regretting it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.